let's do some Python on hardware. Okay, speaking of our newsletter, um, we went over the MicroPython stuff before, I believe, but do you want so to... Last, well, last week, right, is like, it was after the newsletter was released, but before the show, MicroPython 1.23 was released. Um, big thing is dynamic USB devices, which is exciting. Um, it means that you want mass storage, or you want HID, or you want um, MIDI devices. You can now dynamically describe them like in a raw way and then people make helper libraries of course um tricky python has all this stuff a little cooked in a bit more um like deeply into the um firmware itself um but this is definitely more flexible so you know trade-offs um but the other thing i thought was really cool to scroll down was um this oh, oh, oh well, there's this um Arduino and MicroPython side by side on multi core microcontrollers which sounds really cool. Um, so I guess somehow they section off the RAM and they section the processors. And so chips like uh, the RP2040, which has two cores, and the ESP32S3, which have two cores. Um, and I think the RA4 also, the Renaissance, also has two cores or more. Um, you can run Arduino code on the second core while 1.23 runs on the first one and then you can um, send commands back and forth which is kind of neat because a common issue people have and they want solutions to is you know they they love the speed of coding in MicroPython and CircuitPython they love the flexibility but there is they need a little bit of stuff that's done very quickly and they want it done in C um, maybe it's processing some data maybe it's a bit banging some stuff and it's like doing that in, um, i trying to remember the name of the assembly, uh, not Zip, not Ziffer. Um, I can't remember the name. It'll come to me in a second. But there's like a way you can like inline assembly, um, but it has to be like the particular assembly for that microcontroller. And it's of course like the writing assembly is like very challenging, especially when you're dealing with an ARM core where there's a lot of like busy wait states and, and registers are, complicated and if you want to actually use a peripheral it's more challenging um also not all peripherals are supported in MicroPython. maybe you want to use a canvas peripheral that isn't um that has arduino support but doesn't have MicroPython support yet so you could communicate between the two between the two and have one core running this arduino you know high speed c processing while MicroPython is how you do the fast iteration um so i think it's a really cool idea because um if it works smoothly you can, you know, the only thing is you kind of have to spend a whole core on, on the Arduino code, but you can have that do your intense processing while your dynamic and reconfigurable stuff, and maybe you're like, um, you know, string management and buffers and JSON parsing, all the stuff that, um, you, know, you know, regular expressions, all the stuff that they do really well, um, you can maybe get the best of both worlds. So I'm excited to see how this comes together. All right, well, we'll do a question now, because this is has something to do with it. Should you, would you be able to do this with CircuitPython on Arduino? I don't know. Um, it it I don't I haven't looked at it in detail because it just got released. Um, we will be catching up. You know, we do a catch up PR for releases, so we will not immediately. It's going to take a couple months. We will eventually catch up to one, two, three, um, and we'll try to include this AMP thing. But if it's part of the core that isn't shared, you know, if it's part of the core and it's not, it 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 changes Circuit Python core code. It could be it and a difficult thing to merge in. So for now, I think if you want to experiment with it, definitely do circuit Python, uh, do MicroPython instead. Cool. All right. Deliver to your inbox every single week. Get a data free deal.com.